Woodyo here. What's going on, guys? Just taking a look around here in a Battlegrounds game. Actually, I'm just going to direct this one to you there, Hockey. Uh, I'm sitting here, I'm finishing off Chihuahua. I think I'm going to leave a stack right here. Maybe in Porta Pensac. Porta Pensaco or whatever whatever that city is called there. Leave a force there ready to confront California. I'm bringing my strike fighters back over to my capital to get ready to support a run into Illinois. Illinois did get a little big on us there. But we should still have control of the economy. Illinois looks to have started to build arms industries. But they're all grade one. So we need to do this now. Need to do it now. Actually, I think as soon as my strikers get here, I'm going to go up and go ahead and start punching in. If you, let's see, what do you got here? Five, six, seven, eight. In your capital with three outside five infantry five tanks and a captain or an officer what I would do I wouldn't run well okay you got two APCs I would take that stack there of eight combine it with I'd just make it a stack of nine just bring on one of your recon vehicles and start sending it Straight into six, blah, 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 straight into Chicago. Iowa is going to be victimized, but that's going to be his own. That, that's he's just going to have to deal with it. But over here, California is getting set up too, but not nearly as well as Illinois seems to be doing right now. And then after California and Illinois comes Washington, who is also getting established. He's got a couple arms industries, but not many. He's getting there, but he's not there yet. He's got recruiting centers and army bases built everywhere, but then he does noob things like this, like building an arms industry in a place where... I did that too, you know? I mean, it looks like there should be... A resource being provided there because that graphic shows up over top of the province but it's part of what Seattle makes in gears whereas this province makes nothing same with this one so he's wasting resources which will buy us time I am still pumping out infantry I think my next research goal is I'm working on the radar infantry upgrade I might switch over to strike fighters but I really need to update my uh, upgrade my, my regular fighters before we get too far honestly I might regret not having more fighters right now I kind of wish you had some fighters where is your fighter you should have a fighter did you lose it already oh there it is two fighters and a hero you're gonna want them birds don't fly your helicopters with your jets you're slowing your jets down tremendously these guys go at a speed of seven and their range is only 400 whereas your jets range is 750 almost twice that and its speed is 12 also almost twice yeah you get the support sorry I had to pause the recording there for a second I lost my train of thought but yeah, split those birds up, man. Split those birds up. You see how I, uh... Well, I'll show you a different game here real quick. 
Let me go to... Yeah, let's do my Battlegrounds. My This game I've already won. I won this game. This is the one I was telling you about. I won it on like day... Four. <laughs> so, my strike fighters only fly in groups of strike fighters. My fighter jets only fly in groups of fighter jets. And my strike wings only fly in groups of strike wings. Now, sometimes early on, I will mix like two strike fighters with a regular fighter. They have similar range and similar speed, so it's not it doesn't it doesn't hinder one or the other too much, you know what I mean? Like it, it, they can still both operate to their to the maximum of their ranges. Whereas if you do that with a helicopter or say a heavy aircraft, the ranges are they're just too extreme. They they don't work well together. So yeah, do that. And uh, another thing I usually do here, that's another thing. I'm building up here. I'm stacking up against New York. I've got a small artillery brigade here. With this, I can see the troops. I can shoot the troops. See the troops. Shoot the troops. Conquer the land that my, my guns roll onto. So this is an effective little uh, setup here. And uh, generally though, what I'll do is I'll, I'll create a, ta a stack of 10. This is early game. Well, this game's already won, so I didn't worry about creating tanks. But usually early game, it's going to be just infantry and a recon vehicle, right? Because that's what you start with. So I'll build up a stack of 10, set it on the border, wait until I decide where I'm going to target, and then I'll send that stack of 10 in. And what I'll do is I'll split off of that stack as I conquer cities. I'll leave one or two infantry behind, depending on the hit points left. If it's a half health infantry, it's gonna, you're going to need to leave two infantry units behind. Because when the rebels spawn, if the rebels spawn, they're going to do fight, right? So you're going to need enough health to survive the fight to where the rebels do not conquer your city. So, yeah, that's what I'll generally do. I'll, I'll, I'll leave one or two behind, and then I'll take my stack of seven or eight or nine or however many I have and move it on to the next city. So, for example, I'm getting ready to take this stack right here, move into New York City. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and get the, get the party started. Let's go ahead and do it. It's going to... I'm going to send them up through the forest and then down... And I've got my strike fighters here ready to cover whatever comes. And my other strike fighters, my elite strike fighters, are on their way up from Florida. I just essentially did the same thing down here, and I just rolled through. And you can see what's left behind is just one infantry, or maybe three like right here. But as you see, I've only got 30 hit points between those three infantry. So that means 10 hit points per unit. And with them being grade 3, they're supposed to have 17. So they're half health. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave extras behind. Don't want the rebels to take over the cities. Because then that also shows that to the, uh, to the other human players that see that kind of thing, they see that you're not leaving anything behind to protect what's there. And that meant that tells everybody that, hey, this guy's an easy target. He's got no infantry, no military units whatsoever left behind. Because they can't usually see that stuff through the fog of war, right? So they ha they're, you're left with assumptions and spies to be able to figure that out. Or drones and radar. It, it's just things you have to do to kind of scout out the enemy and know what you're getting ready to attack. That way you're not going in blind. So I've got that marching in there. I've got this other stack of 10 or 6 moving in from the west, going into Buffalo. I'm going to want to send this strike wing on up here. I'm parking them off of the, uh, just outside of New York's territory. That way, that way. Let me select these two and create a bigger group here real quick. 
But yeah, I'm parking them outside of the territory. That way, whenever uh, war finally is initiated... Where are my fighter jets? Whenever the war is finally initiated, though... My, fight, my jets will uh, engage. Sorry, I was trying to think. Actually, I might want to pause this. How many hours? I'm going to set a delay. Moving to Buffalo, six hours. So it'll probably be about five hours before they hit shore and cause war. So I'm going to put a delay... Let's see how long it takes to move. Oh, no, 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 no. I've got the wrong unit selected. Let's see how long it takes to move. Seven minutes. So I'll put a delay on here for like six hours. Seven minutes isn't long. I'm not even going to worry about that. I don't need to be precise. Just close enough. So that way, as, as soon as my troops land over here in Buffalo, all this other stuff should start to kick into action. There's green on the thing there. It's the... I need to get my fighter jets up there. I really need my fighter jets up there before everything kicks off. But anyways, back to our game. I just wanted to give those examples there. But yes, hockey, you need to upgrade your arms industries. You see, it's day eight here. I don't think I put any gold into this game, man. But I have been actively building all of my arms industries. That's the one thing that you have to, like, I'll build armed industries, arms industries before the infantry. First two three days you can keep your infantry in and build you know you can keep on building them and you'll have the resources the uh, supplies and the components and money and manpower is basically your limiting factor but it, as you start going on like you have to keep those arms industries going because once you run out of those supplies and components the only thing that's going to replace them is those Arms are those arms industries. It's still early. My tongue's getting twisted. I need to drink more coffee. <laughs> but, yep, that's the plan right now. I'm moving over here. I've got my 20 units set here. Illinois has a full health. Or two full health infantry there. Looks like he's busy over in Georgia. I think I might go ahead and pound into Illinois right now, honestly. I might not wait, because if I wait too long... Ooh, 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 ooh. Newspaper articles. Another important thing here. Let's see here. Oops, I didn't mean for that to happen. But if you see... Look at the casualties. 5,000 to 7,000. That's a close war. Arizona is paying a heavy price to head into California, or California is paying a heavy price to head into Arizona. And yeah, it's actually California heading into Arizona, I do believe, and he's losing a lot of troops just to do so. <clears throat> Washington is also losing quite a few troops heading into British Columbia. Idaho, I believe, is AI. Mexico is AI. I lost an art or an infantry unit. I don't remember that. Illinois is paying a heavy price heading into Georgia. See, whereas your casualties, 200 to 1,100, that's basically, you got into a conflict, killed one unit, and your unit took 
very little damage. That's a good job. I mean, that's what's supposed to happen. That's, you usually want the casualties to be at least double, at least two times. You want to inflict pain on the enemy, not yourself. Going going one for one in casualties is bad. Like 5,000 to 5,000, 5,000, 7,000 is not good. Okay, but yeah, I'm, this video has turned into 15 minutes now, and I'm just rambling and... <clears throat> See what I've got going here. I've got three fighters, three strikers, and I'm getting ready to move over here. Baton Rouge is about to have an airfield repaired. I'll move my jets over there. I don't know what's going on with Idaho or Kansas here. Colorado. Let's see. Where's Idaho? Idaho looks like they are. So I think the only players left are Illinois. start to gather some stacks of units for invasion and let's do this dang thing would yo out